Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Tursellini, and in this episode, we're going to discuss infiltration through the building envelope. In this module, we've discussed how thermal energy moves through the building envelope by looking at Fourier's law of heat transfer. But we also need to realize that air moves in and out of the envelope as well. This can occur through cracks around doors or windows and often occurs in joints of materials, especially where you have dissimilar products together. Another common area for leaks is around electrical and plumbing penetrations. The term infiltration is used to describe air that is coming into the building. If air is moving in, then that air must also be leaving or exfiltrating. The air that leaves the structure represents energy that is lost from the building and cannot be recovered. And so the air that is coming from outside has to be heated or cooled in order for the building to maintain a comfortable indoor environment. The amount of energy required to heat this air is governed by its mass times its specific heat times the change in temperature. If we look at this as a rate of heat transfer into the infiltration air, we can take the derivative of both sides of the equation and assuming that the change in temperature is constant and the specific heat is constant, we see that Q dot is equal to M dot C sub P delta T. This is called a mass flow rate since we're looking at the rate at which the mass of air is entering the building. Since the mass of air in the building is not changing, then the amount of air entering the building must equal the amount of air that is escaping the building. However, mass flow rate is not a common way to measure air movement. A more common way is to use volumetric flow rate, which is often measured in cubic feet per minute. The volumetric flow rate is equal to the mass flow rate divided by the density of air. Knowing that the density of air can be looked up as well as its specific heat, we can substitute density and specific heat into the equation and end up with a simplified version, which is 0.018 times V dot, the volumetric flow rate, times delta T, or the change in temperature from inside to outside. This delta T is the temperature difference required to heat the outside air to the comfortable inside temperature. Notice that the 0.018 has units, which are BTUs per cubic foot degree Fahrenheit. If you're working in the metric system, you'll end up with a different constant in a different set of units. As you can imagine, the volumetric flow rate of the air changes based on several parameters, including the change in temperature from inside to outside. You have what is called a stack effect, that is air moving up through the structure and pressurizing the upper part of the structure while drawing air in through the lower part of the structure. Wind also has an impact on the amount of infiltration that occurs in a building. That wind can be impacted by surrounding landscaping or other buildings. At the end of the day, we want a fairly simple number that can account for many of these things. And so we often talk about the infiltration rate and we measure that rate typically in air changes per hour. That is how many times the total volume of air in the building is exchanged with the outdoor air each hour. For example, if we have one air change per hour, that means all of the air inside the building moves out of the building and fresh air is added to the building every single hour. Today, that would be a fairly leaky building, but it wasn't that long ago where this was typical. Today, we often see buildings that are less than 0.2 air changes per hour, but even with that, that would mean that every five hours, the air is completely exchanged from indoors to outdoors. Now, let's look at another example. For a building that has a leakage rate of 0.2 air changes per hour, the outside temperature is 20 degrees Fahrenheit and the inside temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, let's find the heat loss by infiltration. Note that we generically call it infiltration, but it's really the amount of energy required to heat the infiltration air or the amount of heat loss by exfiltration. And let's say that the building contains a volume of 10,000 cubic feet. For 0.2 air changes per hour, multiply this by the 10,000 cubic feet per air change, and we get 2,000 cubic feet per hour. This represents 1,800 BTUs per hour required for heating. 
We can also multiply both sides by time to get a seasonal energy impact, much like we did in one of our other building envelope episodes for conduction through walls for the entire season. Don't forget to convert with the 24 hours per day. The result is 5.18 million BTUs per season. This is the approximate amount of energy that would be required to heat the air infiltrating the building during the heating season. This is in addition to the energy required to replace heat lost by conduction through the walls and windows. And you may be wondering about the opposite example during the summer when it's hot outside. The approach for that example would exactly be the same as the one we just did. Just replace the heating degree days with cooling degree days to represent the cooling needed to cool the air because of infiltration. And so that's all for our overview of air infiltration in buildings and the associated energy calculations. The main takeaway from this episode is that buildings can be very leaky, causing a significant amount of infiltration to occur. This requires energy to heat or cool that air and to maintain a comfortable indoor temperature. However, when buildings are tighter and designed to reduce infiltration, the energy consumption can also be reduced. Thanks as always for watching and please let us know if you have any questions.